Hey, Cam, thanks for taking a couple of quick minutes here. I'll, I'll make it quick. So you guys are getting Elijah Arroyo back. Can you talk about how, the impact of that for the team um, overall, you know, how it helps your unit? Um, obviously, for the team, I think it's huge. Um, in the unit, um, it's another another body in the room. Um, grateful to be, you know, finally getting Elijah back um, and getting him rolling, and, you know, and rolling in the, in the, in the rotation. Um, you know, we all uh, bring something special to the table, and, um, he definitely helped this team win, and I'm looking forward to seeing as it progresses. Can you also talk about, you know, your game? You've been so physical helping out in the run and pass game as a as a blocker. Um, do you think that you, you know, is it more Elijah's role now to be the receiving tight end? Do you still see yourself as a receiving threat? Um, talk about that a little bit, how maybe does your role change at all, or do you sort of still see yourself doing the same thing with Elijah back in the fold? No, honestly, um, the misconception of me being just a blocking tight end, like, it's a little funny um, because I, I am a receiving tight end as well. Um, obviously, opportunities present themselves as they can. I can do it just as well as anybody in this room. Um, so for like a lot of people to label me as just a blocking tight end, um, it gets me upset. I feel like it's a little disrespectful. Um, obviously, we have our strong suits, right? Um, my strong suit is blocking, but I'm just as capable of doing – catching the ball, running routes, being you know, a part of the receiving game um, as well as everybody else. Um, so do I think I think our role is all the same, you know, everybody in the room can block, can catch the football. Um, it's whether or not the opportunities present themselves to us. And when they do, we, our numbers call, we got to make the play. Yeah, I didn't mean to intimate you can only block. Uh, is it more the offensive style of Shannon Dawson that is sort of predicated right now to the receivers? Because when you say, you know, it's based on what the play shows, I mean, are other defenses taking away you being able to catch the ball? Or is it more just the offensive system is targeting the receivers more? You know, it, it's really just the play call to what the defense is. Um, you know, whether or not the defense is called to the right the right call or the play call is, you know, taken away by the, what the defense is calling. Just, it just really depends on what our job is for that for that, for that that play. Um and like I said, when, when our number is called, um, that's when we have to step up and make the play. And that could be – it'll, it'll be in the most crucial moment of a game. Hey, Cam, uh, I wanted to ask your thoughts on Clemson's defense. They have a top five defense. What are the big challenges this week? You know, their defense is really good, obviously. Um, you know, we got we to gotta, – you know, hats off to them. They've, they've done a really good job this year. Um, and I'm excited to play them, obviously. Um, it's a new challenge for us as an offense. And – going as you know, defense of their caliber. Um, but we need to be prepared for everything. Um, they, they play really sound football. Um, they're physical. They cover well. Um, and they, they make tackles. So it's our job to create missed tackles, um, protect well, and, and get open. So I'm excited for that matchup uh, against them this weekend. And, I, yeah. Hey, Cam. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good. Um, so – I know you're not technically in the same unit as uh, Francis Maui Noah, but uh, obviously you you kind of work in tandem with the offensive line sometimes. Yeah. Um, how have you seen Francis kind of grow uh, in practice and, and you know, during games? How much do you think the gameplay has helped him grow? Obviously, he's a true freshman on the offensive line. How has he developed in the last few weeks, month or two? Yeah, obviously, Francis, he's a young guy. So, um, you know, he's been doing a lot of, you know, he's been all, all ears and eyes and just listening and learning. Um, but as the season's gone on, he's gotten a lot more comfortable with being out there. And you can obviously see that. And I definitely feel like he's stepped up to to be in the role that he's in. You know, he's doing a phenomenal job. Um, and a lot of people, you know, salute him for that. Um, it's about now it's just about keep stacking those weeks and performing at that high level that he's been at performing at every week. Cam? Yeah. You there? Um, wondering about the offensive line in general, what kind of job you think they've been doing um you know, they have really great numbers. I know they gave up more sacks this this past week, um, and Tyler got hit kind of hard. But as far as, you know, a, as a gelling as a group, what do you think? I think this offensive line is is, is gelled together really well. Um, you know, that unit is is a close-knit unit. Um, they practice hard. They play hard. Um, and, you know, when we go out there, I step on that field with them, that I'm going to get their best and nothing but their best every play. Um, they're going to leave it all out there. Um, and that kind of goes with the tight end position as well. You know, we're we're inside the core a lot too. So, you know, we have to take pride in their statistics too because there's times that we have to be in pass protection and, and uh, it, it 
falls on us as well, you know, to protect the QB just as much as them. So they're, they're doing a really good job. And, you know, that, that group is really close and I'm grateful to have those guys. How, how much tougher does it get as the season progresses just because of the bumps and bruises and the, uh, the physic, you know, what you've been going through? Yeah, obviously as we get through, you know, ACC play, you know, it only is going to get harder. You know, every game from here is going to get harder. You got to prepare harder than ever before. You know, these games are going to come down to the wire and it's about who can finish the games really. Um, so ultimately it's about who can sustain playing at such a high level for so, for as long as you can at this point in the season. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey, Inez. So as you and your teammates were nominated for the Joe Moore Award midseason honor roll, is there anything in particular that you can say you've learned about your teammates up until this point in the season, uh, especially with ACC play now underway? Um, I feel like we we just growing together. I feel like that was, that was a good good um something that was good that we can look at and see that we, we improved from the beginning of the season like getting to know each other. And I feel like our communication, they got very good. I feel like we playing together very well. So I feel like we keep doing that. We should be good for the rest of the season. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. And as, yeah, uh, first of all, congrats on the, the Joe Moore honor roll. It's a pretty great uh, thing to be in consideration for. Um, my question is, though, um, you guys have, it seems like you guys have a little bit of trouble in, in like run protection and getting the running game kind of going last week. Um, what are you guys kind of working on in, in terms of trying to get that going again, especially, especially against a really tough uh, Clemson defense? Um, um, we really ain't changing nothing up. We just, I mean, we, we, would, we wouldn't know. We just go out there and try. We will not know it won't work before the game, but I feel like if we just keep working, just keep doing this and just stay, stay on, stay on what we've been doing, we should be good for Clemson's game. I know Clemson got a good, a good front seven. I know it's going to be a tough one to run the ball against them, but I just feel like as long as we just go out there and just know we can execute, we should be good. And then also, um, you know, Francis Maui Noah has been kind of really improving the last few weeks at showing up in like the publicly available uh, grades and stuff like that. How have you seen him kind of improve, you know, as he gets kind of more comfortable and uh, gets his feet wet more and more? One thing about Francis, I feel like Francis proved every game, like, He'll go in one game if he think like if he mess up on something as the game go on he'll adapt to it like Francis Francis is a great learner he's a great listener but like if the farther we get in the season he just get better and better so I think he's gonna be very good by by the end of the season come about I would like to say we we week six right now by week eight week seven he's gonna be I think he'll really be at his full platoon because he learn more and more every game so I think Francis is gonna be very good. Uh, we'll go to Susan Miller Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Hey Inez. Um. You guys, I mean, obviously it's a tough road. Now you're in the ACC. Last game, uh, you allowed three sacks, which which was the season high. And I know Tyler was hit pretty hard. Um, wh- what have, what did you see in that game? And, you know, what was the situation there? Where can you improve? And how much harder does it get now as you keep going? I just feel like we just, I mean, it was a lesson to learn. I just feel like we just got to get better. We got to communicate better. I feel like we was communicate better, but. I mean, North Carolina, they're a good blitzing team. Some of the stuff that we try to pick up, we can really pick it up. I feel like if we just communicate and just get everything that we want it, then we'll be very good um, this game against Clemson. Thank you. And let's go back to Wyatt. Wyatt, go ahead. Yeah, and as you just mentioned, the the communication still being something that you all want to improve upon. But going into your particular role, what challenges do you feel like you've encountered this season that you have that have forced you to grow in a particular sense uh, compared to the last couple seasons? Um, challenges, I feel like probably like just picking up. I'm trying to really like improve myself in the run game, but besides that, just picking up blitz is like a really a good challenge for me. It just keep my eyes open a lot, so that really helped me. It helped me better as a player. So I know like we do go against another blitz team. I can see a lot of stuff that I in the past so I feel like I, I improved in that I'm improving that very good is that something that you've noticed by yourself in particular when when you're out there even in practice or is that kind of a dialogue you have with with coach Mirabal on, on a day-to-day basis it just it's just something I've had with coach Mirabal on a day-to-day basis because we always work in blick stuff and I feel like we're going to improve we're going to improve and picking up this very well because I feel like we do communicate good as a front and with the running back I feel like all of it there so I feel like we should be very good at picking up blicks in this game and we'll wrap up with Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey again. So uh, off the top of my head, 
I remember it being kind of around this part of the year, maybe slightly later last season where you uh, you started getting into the starting lineup because other guys were getting hurt. So over the course of the last year, just how do you feel you developed your game and, and grown as an offensive lineman? I feel like I, I know more, way more stuff. I feel like I could just see better. I could just see more things than I couldn't do when I first started as a freshman. But I feel like me just being able to just finish and get downfield, like if we throw a long pass, I'll try to be the first person downfield. We, if I see the running back catch the ball, I'll try to be the first person and go get some extra yards. If I see the running back getting stuck in the pile, I'll be trying to be the first person to go push the pile over. I just feel like me just doing that, I feel like – I feel like that's like really elevated me as a player because last year I didn't really do. I was just trying to do my job and to try to get my job done because I was fresh out there. But I feel like now I just I just know like I can just go out there and just get a, get a few more SDRs and finish more blocks and get down the field faster. So now I feel like I learned more and I stepped up more to do extra this year. Hey, KJ. Um, Daryl Porter was talking about how you guys practice, um, you know, up tempo more this this. This week, because you expect Clemson after last week, we'll probably do some of that more. Um, how tough is that? I mean, last week was really hard to keep up, and you were a little, you guys were a little as a whole tired. Um, you know, what what do you have to do to improve in that area? Uh, the best thing you can do is practice it, and that's what we've been doing a great job of this week is practicing going against tempo, which um, UNC is a great football team. They did a great job at taking advantage of using their tempo against our defense. So, again, that is um, one of the focuses that we will – we've definitely been using going into this game and practicing up-tempo. And also what – you know, what can you say about Clemson in general? You know, Miami has not been successful. Most teams haven't been against Clemson in the last few years, several years. Um, Just – how important it, is it to get over the hump, you know, and get that victory? It's a, it's a, I mean, it's major for us. Um, shout out to UNC. They had a great run game against us, and that's something we pride ourselves on here at Miami is stopping the run. That's our bread and butter. And going against a good core at Clemson, they have great running backs. That's going to be something that, we work on and try to get done when we play Clemson. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey, KJ, how's it going? How you doing? I'm good. Um, can you kind of talk maybe a little more specifically? Uh, you know, you mentioned just now working about stopping the run. You obviously don't have to go into like you know specific game plan stuff or anything like that. You don't need to give away the game or anything. But like, uh, what what specifically have you guys been working on to try to improve that run defense this past week? Well, anytime you go into stopping the run, you have to go back to the basics, and that's tackling, running your feet when you tackle, um, tackling as a unit. And that's that's something that we've we focused on mainly here, especially this week going into a game where we have to stop really good running backs. And then, kind of, uh, somewhat in the similar vein, I guess. But um, you guys obviously have a a, a group of linebackers who are talented and uh, you know capable of getting on the field and making plays. So when teams are running up tempo, um, and you guys are trying to sub in really quick, and but obviously you guys start getting gassed after a while. How much mm-hmm. does it help to have a, a larger group of linebackers who can kind of sub in and out quickly like that? I think there's no better help. Like that is the best thing for us that we can we can and we do have people that are able to go in and execute. Bye. Next, we'll go to Wyatt Koppelman. Wyatt, go ahead. Hey, KJ. So as you played a couple ACC games with this team now, and I know you know you transferred from Louisville last year, um, and maybe you saw a little bit of Cade Klumnik play, what are some of the particular challenges that he poses as a quarterback in the ACC as opposed to what you just saw in Drake May this past week? He's a great quarterback, and he's, he's a dual-threat quarterback. He can beat you running and he can beat you throwing. So in playing games like that, Everybody has to do their 111. Um, there can be no superheroes. Everybody has to do their job and contain and drop in zones and match and do everything we have to do as far as executing the game plan because a good quarterback like that will find the mistake. Let's go back to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey again. Um, kind of just a general question, but you've been around the ACC for a while, and like obviously you guys have had – you know, a tough run through the first two ACC games. 
Uh, you look at your your former team, they beat Notre Dame, then lose to Pitt. You got Duke beating Clemson, kind of some results that are all over the place a little bit this year. Just what do you think about the league in general? You've been around the league for a little while now. Just what do you think about, you know, just the conference? I feel like you have to, and, and it goes to show that you have to put your best foot forward in every game because you never know how the league is going to shake out. Um teams that are picked to win end up losing, teams that are picked to lose end up win- winning. You just have to go and put your best foot forward so that you don't count on teams winning or losing to have a good shot at whatever your goal may be. The winner. Uh, hey, Daryl. So I wanted to ask you just about Clemson's offense. Um, you know, they got they got a lot of weapons. So when you look at them on film, you know, how big a challenge is this for, for you guys, not just as secondary, but the whole team? Um, I feel like every week is a new challenge. Um, I wouldn't say it's any different. Um, we're going to come in defensively, uh, have adjustments, and be ready for this weekend. Next, we'll go to Adam from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Daryl. How's it going? How you doing? I'm good. Um, I guess a little more specifically about Clemson's offense. Just what have you seen on film from uh, their quarterback, Kid Klubnik? Um, he's a good, accurate passer. You know, he has a lot of weapons on offense. Um, I feel like they're going to go fast tempo this week, so this week we'll be ready for it. Any other questions for Daryl? I'll I'll keep it going. Uh, you guys, obviously, you know, played Clemson last year. It was a tough loss for you guys. Is there anything that, like, one that you can kind of learn from that. Obviously, it's a different team now, different players and everything like that. But anything you kind of learn about their style of play that you can take into this year's game? And does that stuff kind of ever, you know, stick in the back of your guys' mind? Like wanting to – revenge might be too strong a word, but like, you know, remembering that and like, you know, keeping that in the back of your mind. Does that ever happen for you guys? Um, Of course. You know, losing to a team last year, you would always want to play with a chip on your shoulder uh, for the new year. Um, you always want to have get back, you know, we'll say would we'll be revenge, but um, I feel like we'll be ready this time. Let's go back to Matt. Yeah. Hey, Daryl. So you mentioned that you feel that Clemson will go fast tempo. Is that more just because of what you've seen from them or more because of what North Carolina had success doing against you or a combination of both? Um, I would say um, what they've seen last week, uh, they've been in the bye week. So I feel like they watch the game, you know. So I feel like they're going to try to do what North Carolina did to us. And let's wrap up with Susan miller Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Daryl. Uh, you said you guys have obviously are, you're prepared now for the fast tempo. Um, you know, how 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 much prep what kind of preparation do you do without giving specifics? And how tough is that, you know, to 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 get ready for a team like that? Um, I would say it starts in practice every day, um, starting fast, um, being ready, well, going against our own offense. Um, we have certain periods where we'll speed it up, so I feel like this time we'll be ready for it. Did the offense get a little, the scout team or whomever, get a little uh, faster, you know, <laughs> like more urgency this week? Yes, they did. They did. Okay. Okay, thank you.